I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Hope you got some things done today, right? Right? An opportunity to exhale for just a second. Um, but we're going to dive right back into it. It is the case that obviously everyone is talking about. You see it whether you're on social media or you're just going to the store and talking to a friend. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone is trying to figure out what the truth is in this whole thing. Now, this is a trial. So like every trial and every witness, um, when they take the witness stand, uh, they take an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And Amber Heard took that oath. She's up on the stand and she told her story. Hasn't been cross-examined yet. This week is the countdown to the cross-examination of Amber Heard, which should begin about a week from today. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, she has told her story. And, you know, that story came after she took the oath. Well, Johnny Depp took the same oath, but had a much different story. Y you think about what this, what we're hearing here is, is Johnny Depp is... is uh, you know, I never hit a woman. I would never do that. I'm the victim here. Amber Heard, Johnny's out of control. Johnny is totally out of control. We're talking about criminal attacks that she's describing. And Johnny Depp saying, well, my finger. How do you think I lost my finger? I didn't do it to myself. She did it to me. So now you've got the jury. And, and, and the job of this jury is... is They've got to figure out how to spot a liar. And they're not trained professionals. They're, they're like regular folks like us, right? I mean, you, you listen to testimony. You, you take a look at some of the corroborating evidence. If it does or doesn't, does it have the ring of truth to you? Are they consistent in what they are saying about what happened? Does it make sense? And, and how does one story versus the other story, is there any sort of common denominators where, okay, well, then maybe that's where the truth is, and then we kind of figure it out from there. I don't know. This is going to be a tough, tough job for this jury to figure out the truth, but that's their job. And to figure out the truth, you've got to figure out who's lying, who's being deceptive on the witness stand. So what we're going to do for you tonight is we're going to bring in a pro to take a look and a listen to Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. They both testified. We're going to take some of their testimony. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times you can see the reaction to that testimony could be as revealing as the testimony itself. But I don't know. I'm not the professional. Let's bring in our expert. Joining us tonight from Orlando, Florida, human behavior expert, Susan Constantine back. Great to see you, Susan. Hey there, Vinny. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, let's let's do it this way, and I think this will be the best way to do it for the folks who are watching at home, is I'll, I'll play a piece of testimony. Some of it we'll see just the person testifying. Sometimes we'll see the person testifying, and we'll see uh, the other person reacting or listening to the testimony. You know, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So let's begin with Johnny Depp, who's the plaintiff in all of this, and I want to take a... this. I mean, this is a key statement that he makes right towards the beginning of his uh, testimony, and if the jury believes this, um, there's a good chance he could win this whole thing. Let, let's take a listen. There were um, arguments and um, things of that nature, but never did I myself r reach the point of... Um, uh, striking Miss Heard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. It's a simple statement. Uh, Susan, what are you seeing? What are you hearing in the way he delivers that significant testimony to this jury? Yes, uh, first of all, he's being truthful. And I'm watching his, I'm you know, up, we go back down. What he's doing, processing all of those, those experiences that he had, recall those conversations that he had. We also have to process. You can see that the stress, the severe, serious moment 
Uh, you can also see in his jawline and around his mouth, the seriousness of what he's talking about. He really is in that moment and everything is in sync. So what I'm looking at is he's talking, are his, is his body language and facial expressions in sync with his words? Is the timing right? Is the, are the eyes moving in the right direction? Looking at the, the jury a couple of times, he's trying to make point of, I've never struck a woman. And when he's doing that, he looks over and he says it three different times, different types of ways. I believe he's being Susan, I, I, I'm trying to read your body language because we've got a little bit of an audio issue. So we're not hearing every word that you're saying and everyone at home, myself, we want to hear those words. Um, so we'll play, and it, were you saying, I'm trying to interpret what you just said, right? That it seemed truthful to you, you didn't see any indications of deception. That's correct. Okay, I think the audio is getting a little better. So let's let's move on. We've got another um, piece of Johnny Depp's testimony. This time we will see Johnny Depp, but we'll also see Amber Heard as he's testifying. So I'd love to get uh, your take on both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Let's take a look. And my my hand is on the edge of the the bar like like that you know leaning over the fingers like that and uh she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered uh everywhere and i, I honestly didn't i didn't feel the pain at first at all i felt no pain whatsoever what I felt was, um, I felt heat. I felt heat and I felt um, as if something were dripping down my hand, you know. Um, and then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. Such an important piece of testimony from that case. We want to hear what Susan has to say about it. So we're just fixing the audio momentarily. But what I'm going to do is show you another piece of testimony, this time from Amber Heard. And then by the time we hear this, we should be able to bring Susan back and get her take on uh, what Johnny Depp testified to and then what Amber Heard testif testified to. Let's take a look. <laughs> so much. I felt like he recognized me and I recognized him and there was just something there that that was the love of my life. And he was. He was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful, awful thing that would come out and take over. And it was, you couldn't see the Johnny I loved underneath it. It was this other thing. And no one told him, no one was honest with him. No one, you know, he'd pass out in his own vomit. He'd lose control of his body his you know he, he'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him i cleaned up after him i mean this man lost control of his bowels and i cleaned up after him his, his, his security cleaned up after him changed his pants in front of me he would pass out in his own sick here's what we're gonna do we're gonna fix that audio for you folks we're gonna take a Quick break. When we come back, we'll bring back in Susan, get her reaction to some of this testimony. Don't go anywhere. Beat privates and beyond. Do you recall what Mr. Depp was saying to you when he had the bottle and was pushing it against your pubic bone? He said, I'd, um, 
Uh, that he kill me. He'll kill you. He said it to me over and over again. He said I'll kill you. Important testimony. This is a, a, a sexual assault. She is describing to the jury, and at the end, looking at Johnny Depp from uh, from Chanley Painter inside the courtroom. One of the only times she looked directly at Johnny Depp. Susan Constantine, human behavior expert, still with us. We've reconnected old-fashioned way by phone. Uh, Susan, tell me your thoughts about Amber Heard's testimony right there. It's so significant. She's talking about a brutal. She's describing a brutal sexual assault right there. There's a lot that's going on here. When we're talking about this brutal attack, um, you would expect to see a sense of horror or a sense of fear of taking you kind of back to that moment of where she was being violated. And what I'm looking at is I see a lot of what we call self-loathing. I see her chin pouting up. It wrinkles. It's more of a I feel sorry for myself. It's a pouting expression that what, what I'm seeing from, from her. The other thing is that when this incident happened, what, six, eight years ago, and when somebody has gone through therapy, someone that has maybe gone through EM, EMDR therapy, they learn to kind of normalize those trigger moments. And what happens in here, in this instance, when I'm hearing her recall this, it is as if it were happening right then. But the problem is it's over-exaggerated. So when I'm watching her facial expressions, it's what we call over-performing or over-facing. Now I want you to look at when she was actually hearing this before her face was very stoic. No expression, no movement, no startle responses, no raising of the eyebrow or pouting. Now she's telling the story, and she's pull it, putting it on full steam ahead. And the expressions, the timing, the movement, everything is off. She is in performance here. All right, let's go. Um, we've got one other moment where, and this is out of sight of the jury, so they did not see it. They were already gone. Amber's getting off the witness stand. Johnny is standing up, and there's a moment where they seem to have this eye contact. She backs up. We're looking at it now. Uh, what does that tell you about uh, her behavior and his behavior in that moment? Yes, well, this was Amber's what we call startle response. You see her eyes kind of quickly flash up. Her mouth slightly drops down. They make eyes. She realizes he's right in front of her, and then she kind of steps back to get out of the way. But I don't see fear in her facial expressions. It's more what we call a startle, uh, startle response. And then we see death. You know, he locks eyes at her. And what he does is really interesting because as he starts to slightly turn away, he gives her a shoulder, a shoulder gaze, and he's holding it for two or three seconds. That's a form of, uh, you know, of intimidation. You know, I've heard you. I'm looking at you. She doesn't even make, uh, make um, gaze at him whatsoever. And then you see what we call a cheek pucker, and you see this with depth. And that is a form of exagger, uh, exasperation. And then his mouth becomes more stretched. And you see him do kind of a, sh uh, a double shoulder shrug. That is a shrill. It's just like, Ugh. you know, he just, he didn't want to even see her. So, and then he smirks and there's a form of contempt and duping delight. So there's multiple emotions that are going on there. Smirking is contempt. It's kind of like he, he makes eye contact with her. And uh, he, there's a form of arousal that came from that, that little two-second, three-second glance like, I got you, I'm watching you. So there was a lot of uh, stuff that was going on in that interaction. And, and Susan, I just want to uh, go back to Amber Heard. There was a huge question I forgot to ask you about it. Uh, so you said over-exaggeration. Is anything that you saw equate to deception where not telling the truth versus over exaggeration seems to me when I hear that I hear it's got a grain of truth in it um, but it's it's not it's not completely truthful what's so what's how should we interpret yes. what, what you're saying thank you so much for asking all right so what I'd like to share with you is that 
that most of what we're hearing is going to be truthful. There's fragments of pieces that are distorted, that are uh, misleading. And what we're seeing here is that over-exaggeration. When a person uh, feels that they're not really convincing someone, they tend to pump it up a bit. They plump it up. So they become more ex exaggerated. When they do that, they fall into the deception category. So it's hard to take anything they may say as being the full truth because they've had to pump it up and exaggerate it too much to the point of it throws it right into the deception category so it's not credible. And are you seeing anything from Johnny Depp's um, reactions from counsel table as Amber Heard is testifying that is significant? Well, he doesn't want to make gays at her. He does, he stonewalls. So that's when he's looking down. He doesn't, he's kind of disengaging from her. I don't, he's saying to her, I don't want to give you even an eye glance. I'm not even going to pay attention to you. Uh, a lot of times you'll see him put, bring his hand up over. And in fact, at one point when he was talking about um, a very horrible incident with the bottle, you see him scratching the top of his eye. And his dad is just in disbelief. He's like, I cannot believe she is actually saying this. And, there, and then he's got the hand over his face. And that's a form of eye, facial blocking, eye blocking, just kind of blocking out the information he's hearing because it's just too painful to hear. And so he tends to eye block. Susan Constantine, I'm so glad that we were able to hear you. Your insight is, is, is fascinating, and we always appreciate your time. Susan Constantine, human behavior expert, joining us tonight from Orlando. Thanks so much, Susan. Thank you. All right, we've got some other guests lined up that we want to bring in right now. Uh, joining us in Spencer, North Carolina, violence against women expert consultant Julie Owens is with us in New York City, family law attorney, managing partner at matrimonial law firm Berkman, Bodger, Newman, and Shine. Jacqueline Newman is back with us. And also in New York City, psychotherapist and host of Talking Live on Facebook Watch and the Bite Side podcast, Dr. Robbie Ludwig. Welcome to you all. Thank you so much. Um, as we've convened here, um, the first thing I want to talk to everyone about is Amber Heard's first, first um, testimony about her accusation of the first physical violence in the relationship. I think it's a significant um, event uh, for the jury to try to figure out. Uh, and she is saying it is the first time that Johnny Depp ever struck her physically. And it all involved a tattoo that he had on his arm. It was originally Winona Ryder. He changed it to always a wino or always wino, something like that. So there was this back and forth. So let's take a listen first to Amber Heard's description of what she said happened. I was sitting on the couch and we were talking. We were having a like a normal conversation, you know, just there was no fighting, no argument, nothing. And um, he was drinking and um, I didn't realize at the time, but I think he was using cocaine because it was like there was a jar, a jar of cocaine out on the table. I, re I realized that sounds weird, but it was like a, an actual vintage jar of it. But I didn't see him use it at the time, so I, I didn't really factor that in. I just, you know, he's drinking and we're talking and it's there's music playing and he's smoking cigarettes and we're sitting next to each other on the couch. And I ask him about the tattoo he has on his arm. And to me, it just looked like um, black marks. It, like, I didn't know, I didn't know what it said. It just looked like muddled, faded tattoo that was hard to read. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? It says, why no? And I, um, I didn't see that. I thought he was joking uh, because it didn't look like it said that at all. And I laughed. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. And slapped me across the face. And I laughed. I laugh because I, I didn't know what else to do. I thought, this must be a joke. This must be a joke. Because I'm, I didn't know what was going on. I just stared at him, kind of laughing. 
still, thinking that he was going to start laughing too to tell me it was a joke, but he didn't. He said, you think it's so funny. You think it's funny. You think you're a funny. And he slapped me again. Like, I wasn't clear. It wasn't a joke anymore. Okay, so let's let's break this down. And, and Julie, I want to start with you. Um, the nature of this first accusation um, by Amber Heard, the first physical violence that she says she experienced, um, her reaction, some people are, are wondering about the reaction of, of you, the man you love, the man you've married, has just slapped you across the face in an act of violence and, and you are laughing. Is that something that is... Um, consistent or inconsistent with with the, the many women that you have spoken to and, and in your expertise in this area? Is that something that is plausible? Actually, it is. Um, I think we have ideas about how victims should act and what they should or shouldn't do and what their expression should be. But the reality is when someone has trauma, especially if it's cumulative, there've been a lot of things going on in their life and they are not gonna necessarily react the way you think they should. Laughter actually can be from shock or from nerves. Someone can learn that someone close to them died and burst out laughing instead of crying. It's, it's a physiological response. So I don't think we can make a lot of judgments based on that. Uh, to me, having worked with thousands of abused women, I listen for the ring of truth in a story. And I hear certain examples and their details that are minute that are not typical in false allegations, for example. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, there, you know, there's two parts to this, right? There's the, um, the accusation about Johnny Depp and, and how he's acting and how he's reacting to the situation. There's how Amber Heard is, is reacting to the violence. Um, your thoughts and, and, and the introduction of this jar of cocaine, it, it seems to be a big part of it because it seems Amber Heard's, um, what she's telling us about Johnny Depp is that there's really two Johnny Depps. There's a Johnny Depp who's, who's on drugs and under the influence, and then there's the other Johnny Depp. And that is certainly possible. And I'm sure that Amber experienced Johnny that way. And also people with borderline personality disorder, if we are to assume that disorder is correct, often split. And they see people in a very idealized way. And then they also see people in a very dark way. But I did notice in the clip when Amber mentioned a jar of cocaine, uh, that you, you see Johnny Depp looking to his lawyer, like almost in shock over the word jar. <laughs> that, that was kind of a shocking word to him. So I think what we're hearing is certainly Amber's telling of the story and telling of a very disturbing situation between the two of them. But because her presentation style is so dramatic, sometimes it's hard to know whether there's acting involved because she is an actress and maybe that's unfair, but I think that's how a lot of the audience is seeing Amber. They're looking for clues to see if she's acting or in fact telling a truth. Jacqueline Newman, this is a he said, she said, but uh, this he and this she are different than most he and she's when they're battling inside a courtroom. They're both professional actors, right? And that's, that's a fact that can't be lost um, in all of this. Ultimately, though, this jury of, of ultimately seven who will be deliberating have to figure out what the truth is as they hear um, Amber Heard's testimony and Johnny Depp's denial that this ever happened. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be challenging. I mean, I think the court of public opinion is probably not siding, as I understand, very much with Amber Heard. Uh, that said, you know, they're going to have to look at all the facts. They're going to have to look at the credibility of all the witnesses, not just Johnny and not just Amber. So when they consider everything and kind of look at the facts as a whole, they're going to have to decide who's telling the truth. And then when they make that decision, then they're going to decide what they're going to do with the rest of the case. You know, it's interesting. We not only have Johnny Depp and Amber Heard with different versions of things, we also have a battle of the experts in this case. When we come back, 
We're going to talk about the dueling uh, psychological evaluations of Amber Heard. And uh, who is she? Is it borderline personality disorder? Is it PTSD? Uh, when we come back, we'll break it all down.